And um, in New Hampshire, very interesting. Uh, and again, I don't buy that much going with the polls. polls I know. But this is what the polls said about New Hampshire. They have Amy Klobuchar now polling third behind a neck and neck Buttigieg and Bernie. So as of now, it is looking like if these poll numbers hold, which they may not, uh, Joe Biden may head towards a fourth place finish tomorrow. And if uh, Elizabeth Warren does better because of her geographic proximity to New Hampshire, as Fernando Uribe predicted, there's a scenario in which Joe Biden could finish fifth tomorrow. Now, Joe Biden's whole candidacy, John, has been about one rationale, electability. Now, if he finishes fourth in one primary or one caucus and then fifth in another primary, I, I think it's going to be very difficult for him to make the case to Democrats that he's the most electable candidate when he can't win any elections. I can't imagine how he's the most electable if he can't get elected. And most of the things that are happening right now, Frankie, in the Democratic side, they're happening in twos. You know what I'm saying? You got Warren and Klobuchar endorsed by the New York Times. You got Biden, uh, you got uh, Buttigieg and Bernie um, in a neck and neck tie, supposedly, in, in, in Iowa. Uh, if there's two choices in New Hampshire, it's sad if Biden can't even be one of them. Yeah. Maybe there's another tie in our, in our future here. Well, we'll see what happens. But, uh, I, you know, in New Hampshire, they have a more conventional primary election where they just count the votes. They don't have you uh, go to a meeting, argue for hours, go into different sides of the room and get together, have a precinct cabinet. It's a much simpler process. And I have a feeling New Hampshire will be able to run this, no problem. And the elections officials in both parties in New Hampshire are saying they're well prepared for this. They will not have a repeat of Iowa in New Hampshire. But one of the things we are seeing is that you know who showed up at an opening of Mike Bloomberg's campaign headquarters a couple of days ago? It was uh, Michael Douglas, the actor Michael Douglas. And he said that his father, among his, fir his father's first words, excuse me, among his father's last words before he died at 103 years old, was support for Mike Bloomberg. So he goes to this Bloomberg event, Mike Douglas does, and says his father told him, Mike Bloomberg can get it done. He's done more as a private citizen and as a mayor than most any other congressman or senator or elected official. This is a great, great guy. Do you buy that Kirk Douglas' last words were an endorsement of Mike Bloomberg? Uh, I don't know. Maybe they were friends or something. Maybe. And, uh, you know, the... The musings of a 103-year-old man did not necessarily move my electoral meter. meter. Um, but he's a legend. I respect him. If that's what Michael Douglas is saying, then, then so be it. But it doesn't look like uh, many in the party are fighting against Mike Bloomberg being the guy who can get it done because it looks like the establishment does not want Bernie. For all yeah. you Bernie bros and Bernie... Bernie is getting burned again, and if you don't see it, your eyes are closed. So start rising up now before it's too late, you Bernieites, because uh, all the fix is in, if you ask me, to set up for Mike Bloomberg. You know, there's, uh, in, in the land of the blind, in, in, in the land of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. And uh, as it seems right now, at least Bloomberg may be, you know, the, the one-eyed man in that thing, because he's, he's rising, and uh, it seems to me... Bernie's getting the crap kicked out of him, and everybody else is, is falling. Well, it's going to be interesting to see what happens tomorrow, that's for sure. I would say it would. And the, the thing about Bloomberg is maybe he came up with a new strategy, but he doesn't have to get any scuffs on him. He's not even running in these preliminaries. His race car don't have a dent in it, and he gets to see and pick at the carcasses of what's left after these first two um, and then start deploying $55 billion. So, you know, you figure it out. Him and Tom Steyer should team up. They'd be the richest act ever in, in, uh, in presidential politics. But uh, we're going to take a quick break. Frankie and I are going to come back right after this and break down the news a little bit more. You're watching Liquid Lunch. Stay right there. More Liquid Lunch after this. <laughs> 